If you've ever had to collect documents or gather any kind of information from your clients, you know how much of a pain this can be. In this video, you'll learn a few ways to try and make this process uh, a bit more pain-free, or at least just with as little pain as possible. Uh, no matter what you do, you will probably still run into some problem clients. Uh, that will make things difficult for you, but as long as we've got an overall good process uh, that's going to save you time and frustration, uh, it's pretty much going to be a big win. So one thing I want you to think about overall is that the process needs to be as simple as possible for your clients. They shouldn't have to think as they're going through the process. Like nothing should be left open to interpretation because if it is, some people are going to mess it up. You know, I've heard of a story where someone was asked to upload a photo of their passport uh, and they sent in literally a photo of the front of their passport rather than it open to the photo page. So, you know, that's the kind of thing you need to dictate, it sounds ridiculous, but um, when things are left open to interpretation, um, they will get messed up. You know, clients don't have the same experience in your industry that you do, so they aren't thinking about things the same way. So you actually do need to spell it out. And once you've done this once, you know, you get to reuse the same stuff again and again um, on all your clients and you'll save yourself a ton of time. So let's dig into some of the ways you can gather documents and information from your clients. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and if you'd like to learn more ways about you, how you can improve processes in your business, get more productive and automate things, please hit that red subscribe button below. But now let's get into option one and that is email. So this is the system that most people resort to. You know, on the surface, it looks very obvious as the thing you should use. It's a communication channel that we're all familiar with. You know how to use it. Your client knows how to use it, uh, but um, it can, be a bit of a mess. <laughs> As I'm sure you already know, given you're here, you've probably tried email already. Uh, you know, if you ask for 10 different items from your clients, they'll probably send back five and two of those will be the completely wrong thing. Uh, so now you've got a, another email thread going about the two wrong things. You have to say, hey, please send me a different version of that file. I've seen email threads expand out to like 50 to 100 long just to re request a handful of documents. Um, you know, sometimes attachments go missing because um, certain email systems might block large attachments or, um, you know, maybe they just don't get through, they get trapped in spam, whatever it is, things go missing. So email can be a, a problem like that. Um, but yeah, it just honestly turns into a big mess. So it's not the best system, but there are a few things you can do to make it a bit easier on yourself and your clients. So let's go and have a look at an example here. First thing, make sure you've got a very well-defined list of things that you need from your clients. So here, don't worry about the exact type of documents we've got listed here, like driver's license, passport, foreign passport. We're going for a proof of ID here. This could be anything, any kind of document or information. It could be forms that you've needed them to fill out. It could be bank statements, whatever it is. Uh, if it's some kind of information you need and they need to upload it, just imagine you know, you've got whatever you need in this list. But it's just important to make sure you've got a well-defined list that your client can read through. So you can see here, you know, we've got the bolded driver's license and passport, etc., and a description of exactly what it is that we need uh, or how they can find it. You know, if you're asking for bank statements, you can say, uh, make sure it's the PDF style. We need you to log into your bank, um, go to this part and download a PDF statement from last quarter. Uh, if it's a CSV, specify you need a CSV. If you need images of things, make sure you specify you know what size it needs to be. If you're asking for an image of a um, an ID or of them or of their team or whatever it happens to be, uh, specify the size, the orientation, uh, specify that it's not blurry, what page of the passport you need it open to, you know, the, the all of those things. So there is no ambiguity in, in what you're asking for. A couple of things to make email work better for you. You'll need to collate the files somewhere else, of course, you know, so make sure you're downloading them as they come in from their client, putting them in a specific folder for that document request from the client, you know, it helps to break it. If you've asked for 10 things, break that out into its own folder where only those 10 things are in and maintain your own checklist somewhere. So that might look like something like a spreadsheet where you have, you know, uh, documents here on the left and you can literally just put a Y or an X 
specs, whatever you like in the column uh, B, so you know what has been provided, what's still outstanding. So if you need to send summary emails, you can just come here and send them. If you don't have something like this, you're going to be relying on digging through the email thread to find what you have and haven't got or looking through that folder and trying to reconcile file names against um, the items, you know, so you've got to, try, it, it's a pain in the ass to work out. If you uh, just have it in a, your own checklist, it's a bit easier to go through and, and follow up your clients. So, and that obviously is the last thing here. You need to make sure you remember to stay on top of them. Some email systems will have the ability to bounce an email back to you after a certain amount of time if the client doesn't reply. So that can help you stay on top of reminders. That's it for email. So now let's move on to option two, which are shared drives. So this is creating some kind of online workspace or folder where your client can upload files to you. So a few examples are like Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. I'll just quickly show you through a few here. So I've got our Dropbox file requests open here. And if you have a Dropbox account, you'll find that down here on the left-hand side. Uh, and you can create a file request and say documents, and you can specify where any of the uploaded files go. So you might create a client folder within your Dropbox and say, this is where I want all of those files to go. Uh, you go ahead and create it. And then you can send a direct email to your client to fill that out. And they've actually got a link here. So if I open that in an incognito window so we can see what it would look like for one of your clients. It's just a box where they can literally click add files or drag and drop things directly in from their desktop. So that's fairly simple for your clients. You know, they can share this link around to other people in their organization and they can all upload whatever's uh, necessary. And a big positive of this is that they do not need a Dropbox account. You can use Dropbox to share folders directly just by right clicking them in your Dropbox and saying share. Uh, but of course that means then your client needs a Dropbox account, which can be a bit of a barrier. And remember, we're trying to make things simple here and reduce as many barriers as possible. Uh, option two is Google Drive. So a lot of people are already using Google Drive in their organization. So if you need to share this with clients, I mean, you can get them to upload things directly into your Google Drive, which is kind of handy. So all you need to do is if you've got a folder here that you've created for a specific client, you right click and go share. Now you might want to put their email address in here directly uh, and that will send them an invite. Um, you just need to make sure you're using the exact email of their Google account, otherwise this is gonna be problematic. Um, the other option here is to go down here and go um, give access to anyone with the link and change them to an editor. So that means as soon as anyone else uh, has the link, they can use that. You send that in an email, they can come in here and begin uploading files. Now, the only problem is here, as it says there, sign in is required. So if you are dealing with people that might not have a Google account, this can be uh, a bit problematic. Uh, you know, you don't wanna make your clients sign up for things. Some people are anti-Google, you know, like you will run into problems with this eventually, uh, even though most of your clients probably have a Google account, eventually you'll probably run into some issues. Now, the third one here is OneDrive. Similar to the other ways, you right click your folder that you've created in your OneDrive, you go to share, and uh, you go down here to copy link, and it will, and make sure you change this here to anyone with the link uh, can is allowed to edit basically. And then you, you can even set uh, a password on these things, which is very handy, you know, if you want add, to add an extra layer of security, um, but go apply um, and you copy that link out. I'm not sure if I did that, but yeah. So um, now if I, again, open that in an incognito window, unfortunately, like Google Drive, OneDrive also needs clients to have a OneDrive account. Um, you know, even though we have shared this as a link here, it looks like they can go and upload. If you try to upload something, you'll find it asks them to log in. So they do need to create an account, which, you know, again, kind of a barrier to allowing our clients to send us files. So out of those three, Dropbox is probably my favorite just because they don't need an account, which is kind of an important thing. Now, a couple of things to think about if you are going to use shared drives like this or the Dropbox file requests. Uh, the problem is that there's no easy checklist for your client. So yeah, you can put it in the email next to them, but they can't go through and tick those things off, for example. So it can be easy to lose track if you're asking for more than a couple of things. So you may need to share a spreadsheet with them or send them a spreadsheet uh, that they can open and tick those things off manually. That's what I see most people doing. And just like the email we spoke about before, you should make sure you include instructions in there about what you're trying to see. So 
you know, if you are doing this through a spreadsheet that they access, you can have these instructions in one of the columns just so to make it a bit easier for them so they know exactly what you need. And some of the downsides of this method are that it's limited to files. So yeah, you can get all kinds of documents, images, whatever. But if you need them to type information in, like in an email, they could just reply and send you some information. But using uh, these systems, they can't do that, right? It's basically files or nothing. And you'll still need to send them reminders manually. Like you'll need to get in there and say, hey, look, I can see you've uploaded four out of eight things. Can you please get those others to me ASAP? Um, and if they do upload something wrong, you've still got that problem of uh, opening up another email thread to say, hey, that thing's actually wrong. Um, can you please replace it in this way? This is what we actually need. So just a couple of downsides to think about uh, when you are using shared files. And the final category we're gonna talk about here are forms. So these kind of combine the ability to have a checklist and the uploads in the one place so they don't have to reference like a checklist and, and uploads separately. Uh, they can see exactly what they need to do and upload them right there in the one place, right? So if you're only requesting a very small number of files, a traditional forms tool can be really good here. So some examples are of popular ones are Typeform, Jotform and Paperform. I'll link all these up in the description below, but uh, let's have a quick look at Typeform here. So on the right, this is what it would look like to our client, and this is just where we're setting up what we're asking for from clients, right? So we've got a thing here that says, upload your driver's license below, and then we've said, make sure your name and photo are clear and not blurry. So that's where we're adding the instructions, just like we did over here in email. Now they can see very clearly, this is what we need from them. Here's some instructions and here's the place to upload it. So that can be pretty simple. Uh, the, the upside of a form is that you can collect typed information as well. You know, we can have a question here that's uh, some text so that they can actually type, type into here. The downsides of these forms though, are that they have to be submitted all in one go. So your client will have to go through, uh, they'll access the link that you send them for the form, they'll type in their name, they'll do the uploads, whatever. If they get called away, uh, you know, or can't complete it in one go, they get stuck on something, they basically can't submit it. And if they need to come back another time, they'll have to redo everything they've already done. Uh, so that's a bit of a downside. If, if it's only a few things and you expect them reasonably to be able to do it in one sitting, then absolutely uh, a form can be a great option. Uh, and the other downside is that if they do upload something wrong to you and you need them to fix it, you will have to resort to email and say, hey, actually, please, um, that third thing you uploaded, we need a different version of it. And then you'll actually have to get them to attach it via email it's still probably going to be better than using email from the start though. The final tool I'm going to talk about is Content Snare. And full disclosure, this is a tool that I helped create for exactly this problem. Uh, so it kind of combines a traditional form with the ability for clients to come back again uh, and fill things out in multiple sittings. So as they fill things out, it'll automatically be saved. There's no risk of them uh, losing it. If they close the window, go away, you know, they could be on their phone, fill some things out uh, and then forget about it, come back later, click the link on their computer and go ahead and continue filling those things out. So it all comes to you uh, as you need it. Uh, the other thing is that it has automatic reminders. So as clients, you know, if they forget to upload things to you, it'll just automatically remind them at set periods that you can define. And the other big thing is that they don't need an account to be able to upload things to you. They'll just receive a link via email. They can access it from any device. So over at Content Snare, I'll just show you a quick example. So you can see we've got a few requests for information and documents out here already. I'm just going to go up to the top right and go add new request. Now these are built-in templates, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create a blank request for now to show you what it looks like. And let's just say we're going to do our initial onboarding form. These instructions here are the very first thing that clients will see when they access the request. So it's a good opportunity to embed a video uh, with you explaining how the system works just to add that level of personalization or you can put your logo and that kind of thing in here as well. But otherwise there are some default instructions that tell your clients how to use the system. So we continue and move on to the builder and this is where we ask for information. So let's say we have some initial basic information and in there, we need to ask for their name and date of birth. So I'm gonna ask for name, and we need that to be a single line text. And same, let's do a date of birth. 
copy that in there. So we've got a date field and notice like a forms tool, you can add pretty much any kind of information here. It's not just files. So now let's go ahead and create a new section here for uh, documents. And let's ask for an image of their driver's license. And this is one of those ones that we really want to provide some instructions for to make sure they do it right. So you click this link here and then put in your instructions, which will be displayed to your client. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for a passport. Add some instructions in. And let's also allow the upload of bank statements. So this time I'm gonna go file upload. And what we're gonna do is enable this option for clients to upload multiple files in one spot. So let's say that's everything we need from our client. I'm gonna go through to preview, just skip that because I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And this is where we actually go and send the request to our client. So here you might choose an existing client or set up a new one. We leave the option there to allow access without a login, give it a due date, and we can see what email reminders are going to be sent to our client here. You can define your own emails, but this is just the one that is there by default. So we just go ahead and publish. Now we could just go and send this link directly to our client, but it also says right here that an email has been sent. So I'm just gonna jump over to my email now and have a look. So this is what the email they receive would look like. All I have to do is hit that button to access their request. Once they're in here, it's as simple as following the instructions that are there. They just click the button to get started. Uh, they can type in their name and submit it for review. And as they move through this request, you'll see each thing gets ticked off on the left-hand side. So they choose their date of birth uh, and they submit that and continue on. And, it, and this brings us to our first file upload. So they could either click here to upload something or drag and drop that in. So I'm gonna throw in an image there and submit it. And you can see here now that they've completed uh, this first page here, it's actually highlighted this page as done. And they can continue on uh, completing the request as they like. Now, remember that all of this is automatically saving. So let's say they got called away to do something else. They've closed that request and they come back in again later. All of that information is still there, automatically saved. They didn't have to do anything special to make that happen. And of course, if they do fill out a couple of these things and forget to come back, those automatic reminders will go out to them. And just one thing I'd like to show you finally uh, is something on your end that helps you eliminate even more email. So I'm gonna jump back over to what you would see when you've sent them a request. So we're back on this screen. I'm gonna to go to the request and now we get to review what your client has submitted. So this actually looks very similar to what your client sees, but it gives you the option to go through. And what you'll see here is you can approve or reject items. So for example, this clearly isn't a photo of a driver's license. So we might reject that and say that's pretzels. When we reject that, that sends an email out to the client to say, hey, actually, we need some changes from you and it'll highlight it in yellow so they know uh, to come back in here and fix that up. So that prevents the need for yet another email trail uh, just about something that they haven't uploaded properly. So all in all, Content Snare is really aimed at just cutting back on the wasted time in email trying to collect documents from clients. So that's it. Those are a bunch of the best ways you can gather documents and collect information from your clients. Hopefully one of these gels with you and you can go away and implement it to save a bunch of time in your business. Uh, I'll put a bunch of links in the video descriptions for all the different tools that I mentioned, a few resources. And of course, if you want to sign up for a Content Snare trial, you can do that at contentsnare.com. Uh, link will also be below. Uh, that's it. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me. And if you'd like to learn more about automating processes in your business and becoming more productive, please hit that subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next video.